And we're back. This is the Columbia Calling Podcast, episode 359. I'm here in Monpos, Bolivar. My very special guests are in Bogota and Vieta. So we have another three-person interview this week. Uh, it's a big interview because not only are we having Alvaro Torres back on the show, you'll remember for Alvaro from last year. He's the Chief Executive Officer and Director of Chiron Life Sciences. A little bit about Alvaro, just to remind you. He has over 15 years of experience in the Latin American market, including infrastructure projects and project finance, management strategy, team development, mergers, acquisitions. Uh, he was previously head of business development for SNC Lavalin, Colombia, and was instrumental in growing the company from two people to more than 2,000 people in Colombia. So now he is the Chief Executive Officer and Director of Chiron Life Sciences. We're talking about medicinal marijuana, sold here in Colombia, sold here in Peru, and so on. You'll remember the growth market. And we have, well, it's quite incredible to have Juan Carlos Echeverri Garzon. And many of you, the Colombians out there, will of course know exactly who he is. Colombian economist, former president of Ecopetrol, an oil and gas company. He has served as the 68th Minister of Finance and Public Credit of Colombia. He is the president of Eco Concept, e Concept, a financial consulting firm in Bogota, an associate professor of economics at the University of Los Andes, visiting professor at the Instituto de Empresa Business School Madrid, Colombia's Minister of Economic Planning from 2000 to 2002, the Dean of Economics at the University of Los Andes from 2002 to 2006, appointed finance minister by Colombia's president elect then. Uh, Juan Manuel Santos in 2010. He holds a PhD in economics from New York uh, University, BA in economics from the University of Los Andes, and he writes a weekly editorial for CNN in Espanol. So to both of you, Alvaro and Juan Carlos, thank you so much for your time during your holidays to come and talk on the Colombia Calling podcast. If I may start with Alvaro, because of course this is about Chiron Life Sciences, tell us a little bit, Alvaro, about the success stories since we last talked, because really Chiron Life Sciences has been, well, scaling the heights in this field. Tell us a little bit about what's been going on. Well, um, first of all, thank you, Richard, for having me again. Uh, the last conversation was, was very interesting and always happy to be here. And, Juan Carlos, always a pleasure to, to, to see him and uh, very grateful and very proud to have him in, in our board. So, yeah, well, you know, Richard, it's been, a, as I said before, this, we started a dichotomy year. You know, it's been a very tough year for Colombia, for Latin America, but nevertheless, I think the company achieved a lot, particularly the last uh, three months. And I will start with, with medical cannabis. You know, we became the first company in Colombia to start selling medical cannabis say back in March, last week or last week of March. And uh, we are seeing tremendous growth in uh, medical cannabis in Colombia since we started. As you, you may recall, we have our own network of clinics that's called Serenia, which is the, the, the biggest platform that we have for medical cannabis. I would say, you know, until the end of the year, we've, we've written more than 7,500 prescriptions in the last, uh, you know, uh, eight months growing it's called it 25, 30% per month, month on month. Um, and you know, that being uh, a lot of attributed to the fact that we focus so much on that education, educating doctors, bringing medical cannabis to the forefront, developing strategies to uh, show patients and doctors that this is a viable, a viable product that you know, we are seeing a lot of people uh, that have experienced the benefits of medical cannabis uh, for the last seven months and that gets us, you know, that's very exciting for us. Uh, just recently in December, we were able to uh, get the government of Colombia to cover medical cannabis in Colombia. So now today, uh, even CBD or THC is covered by the, by the medical system in Colombia. We have to continue working to make sure that those processes are a lot smoother, but that also means that you know, for patients who see the need for this, they now um, are able to uh, to get it at uh, a very low cost because the government of Colombia is covering. I think that's one of the biggest news, now, not only for the company, but for the industry worldwide, because there's very few countries in the world, let's say Germany, maybe Israel, Colombia, 
that have a program to cover medical cannabis. And the fact that they, the government did it so fast, I think it shows that you know, there's strong belief in, in, the, in the medication and, and in this industry. Um, you know, we've been doing a lot of things in Colombia. We recently expanded our clinic network. We opened a, a new clinic in Medellin uh, on December 11th, small format clinic, which we want to uh, you know, expand significantly for 2021. And the idea of doing that is that we can take that learning experience that we've had, take it to other cities where we can show patients now that this is going to be covered, that the opportunity to use medical cannabis to treat some of the conditions and start getting away from all this opiate medication, you know, that's, that's so, so damaging. Um, it's been a success, I guess. We've wrote, written more than 100 prescriptions in three weeks, which is very significant considering that this is small for that type of clinics. And we're looking very much forward to to expanding this in other cities in Colombia. And we're take, also taking this model of that vertical integration with the clinics uh, abroad. Uh, in, in, Colo in Mexico, Colombia, Peru, uh, Brazil, those are part of the plans for next year. Um, it's also very exciting for us because, as I said, as, as tough as this has been, we also became the first company to export high THC products out of Colombia, ever, and that we started doing that in Peru. Uh, we started having our first patients with THC and one-to-one -one in December uh, of last year in Lima. And uh, you know, I think it's very in interesting because you know, Peru is an interesting market. People know a lot of cannabis a little bit more than Colombia. The fact that we were able to do it, go through all these regulations, logistics issues, training doctors, uh, gets us very excited. Uh, we also started prescribing uh, cannabis in the UK. Um, also, you know, after we spoke, uh, in October, and we have a very big program to start continuing servicing patients in the UK and, and hopefully growing this year towards Brazil and Germany and looking forward to Mexico. So, uh, you know, when we start having all these patients that are growing, uh, we start looking also at the evidence. And it's very exciting because, you know, we always talk about medical cannabis and we talk about third party uh, information, how this medication works. Uh, but today, you know, we're looking at the patients that we service, we see that 92% of the patients that we service uh, are experiencing a significant improvement in their primary condition after three months. And when you can talk about a medication that has that level of efficacy and efficiency, um, for real, with actual patients that are taking the medication, I think it, it means that not only does this work, but, you know, it's just a matter of time until more patients, more doctors, start to believe in this evidence and and you know it certainly shows that there's a, a tremendous growth opportunity for for the for the company for the country and for the industry in whole like, you know, 2021 uh, last year we saw a lot more countries opening up medical cannabis you know panama mexico ecuador argentina so it just starts to show you even in the middle of this pandemic uh, how everybody's thinking about the future of medicine and uh, you know we, we want to be leaders in that and uh, you know how do we strengthen our company to so that we can execute more? We raised some capital back in, in November, which was great for us as well. Uh, you know, we, we we were lucky enough to be able to get somebody like Juan Carlos in our board, and uh, that starts to show that you know we are going in the right direction. It, as much as this is so tough, but uh, you know we implemented telehealth solutions so that we can have more patients being able to access cannabis in a safe way without leaving their homes. And all these things that we've been able to achieve in the last three months just today puts us in a different path of, of continued growth and, and being able to uh, service patients. And, you know, uh, I could spend hours talking about all these stories, but you start listening to stories of, pa of patients from all ages who have been benefiting because of our product, because of the way that we meet patients. And, you know, we created this company to do good. Sometimes we forget about it doing good right because we focus so much on the capitalistic aspects of our business but when you're doing when you're actually improving quality of life when you are seeing patients results and you see more doctors believing this um it, it gets us very excited so i think this year um even with pandemic and things like that but we do see a light at the end of the tunnel no? uh, mm -hmm. but your know, patients are, are paying more attention to this and you know, we're going to be opening up more clinics as well and we are seeing that medicine has been working great and you know, I think this speaks to the testament of you know, our focus is on the customer and the patient. And the more we focus on that, the more we're seeing those results. So it's, it's been a great year 
despite you know the dichotomy of COVID and no positive light. Yeah, definitely. Well, thank you for that uh, update. It does sound like a tremendous growth year for you, Alvaro, with uh, Chiron Life Sciences. And of course, as you said, uh, Juan Carlos Echeverri has joined the board of directors. And this, obviously, his name and experience offers a gravitas, uh, you know, a real uh, serious, uh, I would say, reputation to the firm. So let me welcome Juan Carlos onto the show here and maybe to give us a little bit of an intervention. First and foremost, well, thank you for coming on. Why and how did you get involved with Chiron Life Sciences? Let's, let's get uh, your belief and, and uh, feeling towards this company. Thank you, Richard. Um, thank you, Alvaro, uh, for, for the invitation to talk to your audience. Um, Happy New Year. Uh, after the events of yesterday in Washington, we have a fresh beginning for the whole world. So I think we are, we're all happier today. And also for finishing 2020, uh, 2021 should be a better year in many respects, <laughs> in more than one. For me, actually, the invitation uh, that I received from, from Alvaro and from the other members of the board of directors they, they honored me. Um, uh, they called me at the end of last year and uh, I... Uh, I was uh, acquainted with the experience of Karen, but then I, I got an in-depth uh, introduction to, to what uh, Karen is, is achieving and, and the very amazing and very ambitious plans, mm -hmm. um, uh, international and in the scientific area, the medical treatment, the clinics. I think it's a, an amazing business model. Uh, and uh, the reason why I think they thought of my name is because uh, like one year ago, we wrote a, I, I, I lead a economic consultancy, a, a concept, as you, as you said at the beginning. And we wrote a piece, um, a longer study actually, uh, on the prospects of cannabis and medicinal cannabis in Colombia and, and the industry that, that, that could uh, represent. And the idea was this, it's, it's, it's very hard to create a miracle, an economic miracle. Let's say like flowers in Colombia or, or wine in Chile or, or salmon or, or, or soybeans in, in, in Brazil or, or avocados in Mexico. I mean, this is agribusiness is always complicated. It, it, it's very demanding. It demands a lot of science and a lot of logistics. And Latin, Latin American countries are, are, are very good at producing, but are not that good at, at packing and selling and, and putting the product in the, in, the, in the world markets. We have advanced anime uh, very, very much in the last 20, 30 years, many countries. I just uh, presented some examples. Uh, and definitely when, the, when, when medicinal cannabis and cannabis in general came about uh, as, a, as a promising industry uh, some years ago, uh, we thought Colombia, this is an amazing opportunity for Colombia. So we wrote this study uh, showing that this can be one of these uh, seldom to see miracles in our countries, especially for us. So we presented a case for a, a potential export market of, of uh, up to $7 billion. Re recall that Colombia's flower exports are like 1.5 billion. Coffee exports are between 1.52 or, or 2.5, depending on the price. Uh, so creating a market that could reach, of course, with, with, the, with many, many caveats, but I could reach, I think, five to seven billion dollars a year on, on export revenues is, is, is something that you have to look uh, very carefully. And, and the government of Juan Manuel Santos, the previous government in which I worked uh, uh, as Minister of Finance, as, as head of a capital, promoted this industry and the health uh, uh, the healthcare minister promoted this, the, the new regulation. But we needed of course, entrepreneurial, uh, entrepreneurs and entrepreneurial base to exploit this opportunity. And I think Chiron is, is, a, is a forerunner, is a pioneer in many respects. So I think that's the reason. I, I, I don't see any other than uh, I, started the, I started the industry and that they are, they are the pioneers and I was lucky enough to get the call. So here I am and I'm very happy and very proud. Well, I mean, that they approached you and you said, yes, this is, this is uh, well, I think it's a win-win situation there indeed. And of course, uh, for both of you then, talking about this, it's 
still to this day, there will be a stigma in Colombia surrounding, let's say, things that come from uh, what is perceived to be an illicit drug. So I think perhaps your name attached to it is obviously stepping forwards and uh, pushing that stigma a little bit to one side. And let's talk about this, this, uh, this business in Colombia because there is so much debate around um, uh, unemployment at the moment. Alvaro, I have to start with you. It's like the company has grown and grown and grown. Uh, you have your providers, you have things. What, what kind of figures do you have now for the size of the company? Because we need jobs in Colombia. I mean, we need people to formalize and we need people to sign up and, and have, let's say, even careers. Do I dare say it? Careers. Well, Richard, I think one of the interesting things about cannabis for us and the way our approach is that uh, right now we have more about 350 employees of all types of professions, from growers, um, you know, who are, you know, who are working on the on the field cultivating cannabis, all the way to PhDs and doctors and nurses, because of our model of vertical integration. So when we talk about creating jobs, uh, we have to think about this is not just on the agriculture side. Uh, this also has to be on the on the medical side and, and clinics. And then, you know, every time we open a new clinic, that creates more jobs. Every time we have uh, expansion of our facilities, we create more jobs with the community and with third-party contractors. It's not just the direct jobs that you create, but the, the, mm -hmm. the indirect jobs. You know? So the people who actually made the product for us, the ones that uh, you know, our, our third-party partners, the people who are providing in the clinic some of the services that we use, uh, doctors, nurses, uh, recent graduate doctors, uh, people at the, at the side from, from our community. Uh, we have more than 50 employees from, from around the area um, that, you know, every time that we keep growing as a company, we have more patients, that means, you know, more production. So um, it's interesting because I, I think few industries can claim that they can produce or provide so many jobs at so many different scales um, and not just agriculture wise. Uh, so when we, we have to remember, we started a company with only one employee, no? two employees, the two founders of the company only three years ago. So, you know, uh, and that's, that's happening also in Europe, in Peru, in Brazil, we're going to start soon. And in Colombia, you know, this type of, when you can create an industry that generates so, so many types of jobs uh, and that you're, trying to see how you are growing and, and give people opportunities to to just you know move beyond their their you know, it's called regular skills and give them opportunities just to give you an idea you know, we've had now four or five employees from colombia who now are moving to other parts of the world to germany to brazil to mexico and just are offering opportunities for growth of all sorts of, of employees i think that's that's that very interesting and, and you know, coming back from that, as you say, the stigma, I think that's, uh, and I'm sure Juan Carlos, as Colombians, I think we have, we, at least I feel that we have the responsibility to change the story. Um, we have the responsibility to, to, for people to look at us different, right? Um, when I was born, you know, 42, to so many years ago, and we were a different country than today, and I think we'll be a different country in 40 years as, as well. So I think the cannabis industry is going to do that. Because, you know, this is an industry being led by, by professionals, by entrepreneurs, by doctors. It's no longer managed by, you know, the legality market. So, you know, those jobs will keep, will keep growing. And there's many companies in Colombia in the cannabis industry who are producing and creating thousands of jobs. Uh, and that, that wasn't happening three years ago. So I think the last government made a, a clear decision to create an industry. This new government, you know, is now believing in that and how do we push them forward? So uh, it's got to be a source of jobs creation but also uh, the type of job creation that creates value it's not just jobs that are all minimum wage and that you have to be able to create opportunities for your employees so that they can move, move up uh, go to uh, train other people in other countries and start you know creating something that creates more value for employees for their families and for the economy excellent I understand look, what you were saying. You have a small format clinic in Medellin. I'm sure you have the clinic uh, in Bogota, and you're going to expand this within Colombia, obviously. And you, you're exporting the THC and CBD 
medical cannabis products in Peru and other places. Every time you guys, both of you, mention the growth of the company, to me, what leaps out is you, the mentions of other countries in the region. Of course, there's the UK and Germany. I mean, seem to be quite uh, forward on this, but you mentioned Brazil, you mentioned uh, Argentina, Mexico. Is this more of a South-South phenomenon? Maybe uh, Juan Carlos can, can address this because I'm seeing this uh, a tendency now to understand that trade between people in the same con continent and neighbors is beneficial. Don't always look to maybe the United States or Europe as the main markets. You know, the South-South is, is a positive thing, surely. Yes, Richard. I want also to, to, to elaborate on, on, on the previous point that Alvaro mentioned and, and the, your question on the, the issue of reputation. Mm -hmm. Because uh, I was born, or especially I grew up and I studied in, in, in the US and in Europe and, and my generation, let's say in the 80s and 90s in Europe and, and, uh, and in the US, we spent a lot of time, every beer we drank with a friend or somebody from, from school or from, or, or from university, uh, from, uh, we spent explaining Paulo Escobar and explaining drugs in Colombia, explaining crime, etc. And I, I tell you the truth, uh, back then I, I thought that our, our stigma would, would stay with us forever. And, and Colombia has been, uh, through a lot of effort and a lot of uh, suffering, able to uh, modify slowly but surely I know along the last 20 years, modify that, that stereotype. Of course, it's still, it's still, some of it is still there. But I think this, this industry will, will show that. I, I have been, uh, when, when I uh, started studying uh, the cannabis uh, industry, I had this, this second thought, is, is this really good for Colombia or not? And then you consider what cannabis have, exactly what Cairo, for example, represents. You have a plantation, in which you have you involve not only a lot of people and a lot of people in the countryside in places that need badly uh, well-paid jobs you need a, a scientific approach a, a, a state-of-the-art technology uh, you need logistics and then in in the vertical integration of Chiron, for example you go to the services not only to the production to the services part and you include physicians and you include the clinics and, and the experts so this is precisely the type of industry that can Colombia overcome that, uh, uh, that bad stereotype of, of drugs is bad towards the new, I mean, I think 2021 and, and the, 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 this decade and probably this century will, will see a, 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 a tidal shift in, in, in the world's understanding of this. And we, you see it in Canada, you see it in the US and in Europe, and of course in Latin America. Now let me address your, your question about, about whether this is a South-South uh, phenomenon. Uh, I think Peru and Brazil, and you, I, I, I traveled to Thailand like two years ago, and in Thailand they were, they were going very fast to, to develop this industry because they were afraid of the Chinese. So I, I think many people are thinking of this. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and you probably will think, okay, this is, this is difficult because it creates more competition. But it's precisely that competition which will First, make this palatable and digestible for everyone, almost everybody in the world in, in, in five or 10 years time. And that will create an amazing market worldwide of especially well-produced um, uh, cannabis, uh, uh, both CBD or, or, or THC. And in that respect, the Latin American uh, market, of course, creates a great opportunity, but it's not only a South-South phenomenon. I think what uh, Alvaro has uh, presented already to, to your audience is uh, the, there is a possibility both in Brazil, in Mexico, in Peru, uh, where of course there's a natural, the natural uh, uh, expansion of, of the Colombian producers and Cairo in particular uh, is, is, is there because they are close and uh, we probably know the regulation and know the market is better, but also towards the, let's say, so-called North or, or, or advanced economy. So I think it, it, it can go to both markets and, uh, and in, in both of them, um, um, try to, to present a new Colombia, in, especially in this, in this so-called, let's say, um, uh, 
reputation loaded Latin uh, uh, industry, which I think is not any more reputation ladder. But we still have some 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 issues to to tackle. For example, banks still need to uh, get used to to finance these operations, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we have we have this is still room to 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 uh, so that regulation allows this to be a completely normal industry. But when that is reached, the the sky is the limit for for this industry. Fascinating that this should be the way. And so it sounds to me, you know, the progressive company and all the opportunities that are ahead for Kyra and life sciences and people in this business, how far are we from then the medicinal and use of coca and uh, let's say the legalization of this crop? I had to, it was a follow on question to what you were just saying, I'm afraid. <laughs> well, uh, I'm afraid I'm not the right person to be in. <laughs> Richard, but uh, I, 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 do, I do tell you the, the following. I mean, it's if you think about the cannabis industry as a whole, mm -hmm. it starts in 1964 with 1966 with the Israelis uh, figuring out that there's an endocannabinoid system. Mm -hmm. So I just want to put it back. We're talking about 50 years mm -hmm. of research and development until that now is now becoming the scale 2020, the year which most countries are now accepting. Um, so I don't know if these other plans will how long that will take to be able to find those type of things. Um, but you do have to understand that you know, unlike these other plants, cannabis is a millionaire plant. We've been using it for 8,000 years. And we've been using it forever to cure things that we're just rediscovering today. So I mean, these, these are questions of what other plants, medicinal, that's a very regulatory question that's just beyond Colombia, right? It's important, mm -hmm. just beyond what we can do. Um, but it, we, we need to make sure that this one, <laughs> that is fully legal, that everyone is on board. Uh, you know, there's still a lot to do on this uh, before we can try to tackle uh, what other things could happen. So, no, I, I don't think that's something that, I mean, at least we are looking at uh, particularly or, or that there's a world push towards that when the world is now pushing for, hey, let's discover medical cannabis and let's see if we can make that work. Um, the rest is, I think the question is better suited for the United Nations and downwards. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I'm here about that, so I, I, really, I really wouldn't know. But I just think we have to give cannabis the opportunity before we start tackling into all, many more things that you know, we, we still really know evidence yet. So there's a lot of evidence of cannabis, and that's okay. what we need to deal with. All right. Well, I have to say, Juan Carlos, what do you say for this? <laughs> I prefer not to talk about it. It's, it's another, it's co another completely different industry. Yeah. A comf is a, is a especially, well, this is the, the type of uh, uses of uh, cannabis are now, that are now uh, in the market and in the medical industry and that physicians can uh, uh, prescribe to its patients, etc., are well known, right? Yeah. And so it, that doesn't translate to other type of, uh, of production of, of illegal drugs like cocaine, et cetera. So I, I, I think it doesn't, it doesn't carry that, that far. And, and from the Colombian point of view, uh, is, is, is to, to the very, very difficult, uh, very different uh, issues. So that's why I, I prefer to pass. Okay. On this. <laughs> very good. Well, no, I'm, that's fair. That's fair that you can pass on it. And, uh, well, I think he knew it was coming anyway. Um, so we've only got a few more minutes here and I'd like to take this opportunity to, to ask you Juan Carlos. And so a uh, couple of questions as we wind down totally here. Um, how do you see the economy in, for 2021 here in Colombia? How can we pull Colombia forwards once again? Richard, the first thing is that Colombia was at a strong pace in February last year. So before COVID-19 and the pandemic hit Colombia, the economy was growing between 4 and 5, it was above 4.5 probably. There was a strong business confidence, household consumption was very strong. So there were, a, I mean, all the conditions for Colombia keeping a, at a good pace. The, the last recession had been three years ago, and it takes normally eight years between one recession and the, and the, and the next. So there's a cycle of, of growth. And we were in the, in, the up, in, the, in the rising part of the cycle. And at that moment, there came this, this virus that came from the other side of the world, right? Mm -hmm. And unexpectedly hit everybody. So... Uh, what we have seen in the year is the, the, what is called the V-shaped 
the V-shaped recovery mm -hmm. is, is clear there. You, you look at mobility to the workplace or you look at the energy demand or you look in at consumption of credit card uh, consumption and, and all of them are, are, are just rebounding very strongly. Mm -hmm. In Colombia, uh, probably uh, the, 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 it helps that the economy was, was in good shape before. Of course, many industries, hotel industry, restaurants, uh, all the touristic industry has suffered a lot and is still still suffering, right? Uh, but many others in uh, manufacturing, agribusiness, uh, services, etc. Uh, healthcare is coming from 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 a very hard point to to recover, and it's very important industry in the, in and commerce, right? Retail sales, etc. is twenty percent of GDP. In, in some, let's say, except from let's say, those industries that have suffered the the most and that still they they don't see a reopening in in the next month or. In, it will, it will take probably three or four or five months still to, to recover. The, the rest of the economy is rebounding very well. So I, 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 we see business confidence is going in the right direction. Let's vote for producers and for commerce. We see um, consumer confidence is going back. And so I, uh, uh, we foresee growth around 4.5% of GDP uh, this year. Which is natural because, because last year was very low and this year growth is just, this is the denominator yeah. and this year is the numerator. So it's, it's a base effect. So it's yeah. natural that you get a high growth because last year was, was a low GDP. But apart, but apart from that, let's say, and that will happen everywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. You see the markets, you see the stock exchange in, 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 in the US and the stock exchange in Colombia and the markets are, are doing well. So people, oil is rebounding. Oil is very important for Colombia. Oil above $45, $50 or about $40 is a very good price for Colombia nowadays, for Copetrol especially. So and that will be a source of revenue and a source of, um, of income for Colombian families and Colombian government. There are still some, um, some issues, uh, some challenges. For example, the fiscal deficit, public debt, not only for Colombia, everybody, everybody. Public debt in the world, Richard, in the world rose 20% in GDP of GDP terms last year. Not even the Second World War. Every country in the world, or on average, the whole world increasing 20% its total debt. That's unheard of. So, um, so that's a big issue. Public finances, um, fiscal deficits, public debt. But fortunately for, for us, it will take some three or four years for this recovery to fully, uh, uh, let's say, get over the, the, the COVID consequences. But we're, we're seeing a very strong rebound. So I'm, 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 I'm positive on Colombia. Uh, the Latin American figure, uh, picture is not that even. There are many different stories in Latin America. Uh, but Colombia will be uh, one of the best ones, I think. Perfect. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. So I'm running out of uh, Zoom time. So thank you so much for your time. And one last question. So yes or no answer, Juan Carlos. Presidential run 2022, yes or no? What do you mean? Are you going to run for the president?